Kyle Thomas Bush from Las Vegas, Nevada, born May 2nd, 1985. You may know him for this. I'm still not a very big fan of these things. I can't stand to drive them. They suck. Or this. He's got him. Oh, I believe he's got him this time. Oh, he turned him. No. Oh, he turned oh, him. No. no. Or this. The 17 of Timothy Peters, they slid up the racetrack. Right. And now Kyle hey, Busch not down. happy calm at down. all. It's all good, dude. And Kyle Get Busch is going to turn on, over and three to the wall. Yeah, Our championship man. contender horn today on the wall. Well, Kyle Busch should be parked for this race and maybe the rest of the season. Yeah, it was probably that one. This is a story about how a young kid from Las Vegas became one of the most hated athletes in the history of professional sports. The 2005 MBNA Race Points 200 wasn't Kyle's first rivalry, but it was his first with a fan favorite. Kevin Harvick, four years prior, filled in for the late Dale Earnhardt Sr. and with his rebellious grease monkey attitude, really fit the mold for what Dale Sr. fans wanted in their new driver. Kevin Harvick was undoubtedly one of the biggest fan favorites at the time, and Kyle Busch was nothing more than defending Cup Series champion Kurt Busch's little brother. Oh, there they go. There went again. Oh, there they go. Hard. I caught, he can't do that. He didn't make it that time. Caution is out. Here comes another car spinning. Oh, around. Right. And LaJoy is 34. And that's all because he locked it down. Spin and save, though, for LaJoy. And this wreck is still going on. I'm not sure. It's going on purpose. Still uh, going on purpose. I think one of them's throttles hung. I'm not sure which one. I would have guessed the 21. Uh, I had a really, really, really awesome shot back low Chevrolet today, and it was going to win the race, but um, Kevin Harvick wanted to end the day short on us. You know, I got underneath him two or three times, and he ran me low, real low, coming off turn four, especially twice, and um, took all the air off my spoiler, and I got loose and was trying to chase it up the racetrack and squeezed him in the fence, and then he wanted to commit murder on me and drive me down into turn one wide open all the way along the side of my car, so... I think NASCAR's a little upset with me because I drove it back along the front straightaway the wrong way. And, um, you know, that's just because I didn't want to cause a big fight down there with Kevin Harvick. What do they say, Larry? There's two sides, three sides to every, every story. story. His side, your side. And the real side. Which will probably come out in a press release on Tuesday along with appropriate penalties. <laughs> <laughs> and just think, they got to race again tomorrow. <laughs> Kyle Busch was very vocal on his point of view. What was your point of view? And we've got the crash for you here, Kevin. You can walk us through it, even though you already have lived it. Yeah, I don't even need to look at it. I mean, basically, what happened was, uh, yeah, you got a lot of, a lot of these, these guys uh, got a lot faster race cars than they do talent. And, um, you know, uh, we got stuck together there and riding down the racetrack. I'm trying to get back going straight, but, uh, you know, we just kind of hung up there. I was hoping to kind of brush them out of the way, but, uh, you know, it's just unfortunate for this recent Chevrolet. Um, a lot of fast race cars on the track with a few drivers that just uh, have their head up their rear end and, and don't know how to race side by side. They think you just got to run over somebody. And a big goal for you and this team was the Car Owners Championship, and you're going to take a hit today in that goal. That doesn't matter. I mean, the main thing is we had a, you know, a fast car. We come to these bush races to try to win the race, and, uh, you know, it's just unfortunate we had a fast car. And there for three or four laps, we had to uh, get the tires up to pressure and, you um, you know, do what we had to do to, to fend them off. But uh, just unfortunate you got morons out there to have to run over people and think it's get caught racing. Kyle, how do you feel about the way uh, you were penalized for what happened out there? Not a word from him. Keeping his uh, mouth shut right now, guys. Kyle Bush is going to slide up into him. And that's exactly what happened. Around, watch this. Under the caution. Nine is trying to repay it. Marty? Marty? Well, incident number one, what happened, Casey? Uh, we just got taken out. You know, it's uh, there's times when, when things happen and, and uh, you know, you end up crashing because of other cars, but right there we just got taken out. And it's, it's too bad for all the Dodge dealers and uh, McDonald's, Stanley, Siemens, everybody that supports this team. The 2007 All-Star Race is the first time Kyle and Kurt Busch ended up wrecked and on the truck. Kyle Busch, still unproven, 
living in his brother's shadow. This led to one of the most memorable moments in NASCAR All-Star Race history. Kurt Busch in that two got such a run through the middle of three and four. He's going to take second spot away from Burton. Here comes his brother Kyle to the inside. And almost wrecked him. I told oh, you. There he goes. I told did. you. I told you. Oh, my gosh. Checkers are wreckers. That boy's got a lot of talent. If only he can harness it on a weekly basis. From Jeff Gordon. Keep it down there. Good job, good job. And you know, they just had got that two car where I think they wanted it with Kurt Busch. Yep. yep. Kurt has been strong and been in a position to win several races this year. Sometimes circumstances have dictated the outcome. And Kyle Busch has won a race this year. Probably won at Bristol. Won, probably should have won four or five, but things like this keep happening. Just barely got him. You know, the tough part is, is I wrecked real close to the end at the Daytona 500, and there was a lot of money up the line, and a guy named Harvick won the race. A guy named Harvick's leading right now. So that was a bummer to have my little brother pull that move on me, and, and maybe I should have given an inch instead of taking an inch from him. But, hey, that's what the all-star race is all about. Um, I just hate I got a wrecked race car, and so does he. You will talk to him. Yeah, I'm sure we'll talk to each other. Um, it's just tough to have this, this scenario happen out on the track, but inevitably it was going to happen. So we'll see what he has to say about it, and we'll see what, uh, see what we can do to discuss it. But uh, right now, um, I'm not, not eating any cut logs anytime soon. At the end of the 2007 season, Kyle Busch and Hendrick Motorsports decided to part ways after prolonged negotiations. Dale Jr. was slotted to make his shocking jump to Hendrick Motorsports after driving for his late father's race team, DEI, his entire career. Rick Hendrick called Kyle Busch NASCAR's number one free agent, and that's when Joe Gibbs made the call. In the closing stages of the 2008 Crown Royal Presents the Dan Lowry 400 at Richmond, the two men that had been the top two names in the headlines during the offseason were battling it out for the win. An incredible race was taking place and Dale Jr. was trying to score his first win for Hendrick Motorsports since joining his new team. What happened at the end of this race was the single biggest moment in Kyle Busch's career and would affect his legacy forever. Big time going into turn one. Boy, Kyle, Kyle Busch one got a great run off turn two down the back straightaway. You know he'll pack it down into turn three. Oh, he's boogieing down in there, baby. But will it stick? And Junior gives him the bottom. Junebug's, Hard washes up. Junebug's got that high line. He wants to run it, but I tell you, that 18 is going to get under him right here. Three to go. Here he goes. Junior goes up the hill. Let's see if he can get a bite on the bottom of the racetrack. They'll be side by side down the back straightaway. Ooh, man, that was tight off turn two. He's got him. Oh, I believe he's got him this time. Oh, he turned him. No. Oh, he turned oh, him. No. no. wild thing Kyle Busch makes contact with Dale Earnhardt Jr. and it looks like the drought will continue. Boys I just tell you something I ain't gonna go over too good right there. No it's not. I love the little old boy to death but that was not a good move right there. I was afraid of that when it got side by side late in the race on old tires. With Kyle Busch what happened? Hey, it was just uh, a bummer deal you know we were both racing hard there and you know, Denny Hamlin, first off, had the class of the field today. You know, his car was awesome. That FedEx Joe Gibbs Toyota was great. But, you know, Junior and I just racing hard there and uh, getting into turn three, you know, it, from the front end replay, it looked like he come down a little bit. But, you know, it's uh, it's just a part of racing. I mean, um, I, I probably could have moved down a little bit lower getting into the corner. He probably could have moved up higher. I mean, it's just a product of good hard race. And I apologize to those guys, you know. Uh, it, it's tough that uh, they had a great race car tonight and they probably could have finished, uh, if not winning the race, probably second. But, you know, for us and uh, to go on the way that we uh, have so far since all this has gone on has nothing to do with any of that stuff. So well, in the uh, matter of one turn of one lap, Dale Jr.'s feelings had to go from what was probably elation to deflation. Dale Jr., was that a fair racing move or does Kyle Busch need some extra security leaving Richmond tonight? Whether it's fair or not, he's going to need some security from all of us. But... Uh, I, you know, I can't. I haven't seen the replay. Tony Jr. said he he looked like Kyle got loose underneath me, and and that happens. Um, 
I was trying to, I, I wasn't good on the bottom, so I moved up to the top to run as good as I could up there, and I, he'd been running the bottom, so I figured we'd race it out, and he got a great run around one and two and nearly caught by me, but uh, he gave me room to, on the outside off of two, so I wouldn't say that was intentional going into three, because if he wanted to, he could have just run me in the fence off two, but um, we'd been racing each other earlier and had no problem, so I think I've done that before, if it's what happened, if he got loose underneath me, but I just, I, you know, the worst part about it is, is just I've been priding myself on running good all we all year, and I was in position for a win, and uh, I ran hard and got wrecked, and uh, I had a top three car, should finish in the top three, so I was going for the win, <laughs> just. Uh, Ended up on the hook today, so just disappointed. One thing's for sure, he's going to go to Darlington next week, hungrier than ever. 2008 to 2011, Kyle Busch would see victory lane numerous times and make more enemies along the way. His aggressive driving style and attitude were reminiscent of the old days, but the difference was that Kyle Busch was only 23 years old and picking fights with all the wrong people. He looks in. Typical Friday night. Oh, Steven grabs the helmet. I think two guys will be going to the trailer. And you may have to get your wallet out, Dad. There may be a fine. I'm staying out of this one. Well, I mean, we had a struggling night all night. You know, we had to battle there in a, at the end of the race. And Steven, I guess, got a better run off of turn two. And instead of, you know, turning low to pass me, you know, he just hit me in the back end there and drove into turn three. And uh, he knew I was going to hit him, so he moved up the racetrack out of my way. And uh, we got through there luckily. And we were able to come home third or whatever we were. I don't even know. But, uh, you know, when, when you bump somebody on the straightaway, if you want to play boys' games like that, you know, then it's every man for himself. And uh, I don't care. I'll wreck as many cars as I need to. So, um, it, to me, I'm, I'm not going for points. If he's going for points, it's going to hurt him a lot worse than it's going to hurt me. You jumped out of your car and you went back and had words with him. What did you say? I basically told him that you mess with the bull, you're going to get the horns. And then he wanted to grab my helmet, which is, uh, you know, pretty childish again. But, um, you know, we'll see what happens here in the future. And if he wants to play those games, he's going to get hurt. I just rich him, man. Here on a three-quarter mile racetrack, you race as hard as you can. You know, it's uh, it's just a green-white checkered. I mean, uh, for what can you do? You know, but besides that, you know, our uh, Nick Chevrolet, uh, great your son's Monte Carlo. You know, uh, ran really, really good. I got to thank John Bean and Susan Bean. You know, we finally pulled this top five off for him, and uh, it was just a good run for us. You know, we worked real hard over the all season, and uh, you know, we've had a lot of fast race cars just having anything to show. You know, ran uh, ran tenth in Mexico and fifth here, so we're finally building some momentum that we can carry there at Darlington. So. Uh, just got to thank everybody at Atrius, you know, RWI, and uh, I think Harold Holly and all those guys have changed my life and um, the whole race team around. He landed in the window after you guys came down Pitt Road. What did he say to you? I don't know what he was saying, but uh, if I jerked him by the hell and, and just rattled his cage a little bit, you know, and uh, just, to, just to tell him that I wasn't happy with it, you know, he's just a little girl about it, uh, you know. Uh, I don't know. I just think it's pretty bad, you know, when they call drivers introductions, everybody grandstands bougies. You know, that, that, that's always for a reason, sore loser. But anyway. post race. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, he hit me getting into turn one, which got me a little bit loose, chattered the rear tires, but, you know, whatever. That's, uh, you know, Carl's going to say he's sorry he didn't want to race that way because he always does, you know, Mr. Ed likes. So we'll take it, we'll go on, and, um, you know, we'll race him that way in a chase if that's the way he wants to race. Yeah, I just, um, that's one of those deals where I couldn't get by him and I couldn't get by him. I just had to ask myself, would, would he do that to me? And he has before, so that's the way it goes. And uh, just really proud of my guys off the steepo. Got to thank the fans, Ford Motor Company, Aflac. Man, that's exciting. Um, they keep talking about rivalries. We might have one now. <laughs> You two were very close, but not uh, fast enough to get him on the short runs. That last adjustment, do you think your car got that much better, or did his get a little slower? Well, I kind of just ran into him, you know? That's what happened. It's too bad we tore up the car a little bit after the race, but um, I guess he wasn't happy about it. I can understand, but um, just in the back of my mind, all I could think about was Richmond at a nationwide race when uh, he was trying to get through the field, and he piled drove me, and 
you know, I mean, I'm not, it's just the way it is, just racing. I got a lot of respect for the guy. He was real fast, but we can't give up points when we, they're right there for us to take. See that He's shoving to the bottom. Oh, that he just wanted to touch him, man. Just wanted to touch can't him. Can't get him touch to him. the high side. Outside. Here he comes. No, there he, he turns him. him. He but turns him. Oh, the wall. Oh, my God. Here comes Stewart to the checkered Tony flag. And another car gets him to the backside. It's Casey Kane. And they're scattering oh everywhere as they come to the line. Look at the damage to his race car as Kyle Busch crawls out and walks back down the racetrack. The if the second place driver dumps, quote unquote, the leader, then Black Flag doesn't get the win. You know? If he if he's on him from behind and moves him out of the way and there's no wreck, then fine. You know, he can win the race. But if you're up alongside the guy and you dump him, then um, I'd say black flag and then give the win to the third place guy. Yeah, he did, he did I think I'd make a little move here. Contact there. Yeah, that's what you said. Come on, let's see if they're going to fight. I want to see this. <laughs> uh, a little discussion. Right, a few little words here. He's like, hey, dude, one of us is going to win. <laughs> on my right rear quarter panel all the way down to front straightaway and gave the win to the 88 car. He slowed us down so much, he had no idea the 88 car was coming. And uh, the 88 just drove right by both of us on the outside because Brian Vickers was trying to slow both of us down. Just stupid. Uh, oh, man, I'm, I tell you, I am so sorry. I forgot it was the Kyle Busch show. He was better. Um, I thought it was my job to hold him off. Apparently not. He came over to the car after, the, after we came in and knocked our fender in, which was unnecessary, and then started crying like a little baby. And I asked him if he'd just give me a minute to get out. We could talk about it like men. If he wanted to fight, that's fine with me. And as soon as I got out, he ran off. And, and uh, you know, I, it's a shame that that, uh, that it went down like that. I mean, we were racing hard. I thought it was a good race, you know. Board camera is roof cam. Yeah, you can see right there, no contact. This is just, this is just um, agony right here. This is just a little more misery for your evening. And Casey Kane, another driver like Jeff Gordon, who keeps finding himself at the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, I knew he wasn't going to be happy with his teammate, so that's what created this whole mess. There's Kyle Busch climbing out. That's actually walking. the 11 hauler he's walking Whoa. up into. Uh, Here's a look at it. There's Kyle in the middle. Right here, I think you'll see a little contact, and this is what cuts Burton's tire down. But you gotta, you gotta also see that the uh, the 33 was underneath the Kyle. So I can't really, you know, that's a close racing on a restart. Here's a look from the uh, helicopter. Right that, there, there is where the tire got cut. That uh, oh boy, I don't know if that's Jeff Burton and Kyle Busch. Harsh words. I think he might get him right here. He's got it. Yeah, oh, 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 no, the contact. Ball. And he takes the position back. Oh, Kyle, will he retaliate? Uh, yes, he does. Uh, Joey Logano goes past. He gets through it. The caution is out. And there is damage to the points leader. All right, let's go back and look at it all. They battled for about 10 laps here. You see, Kyle got just a little bit loose there as he pulled up in front. Yeah, that's, that's Bristol racing. You know, each one of them, you have to know that he's going to take that chance. But that right there is a payback, folks. That's all that is. I had him cleared on the back, and I moved up in front of him. And instead of him doing an Earnhardt crossover move, he decided that he'd just run in the back of me and put me in the fence. So uh, that's Brad Keselowski. So, you know, I went down to the next corner and dumped him. I mean, what? He does it to everybody else. Why can't I do it to him? So whatever. It's hard racing, man. Uh, you know, going for the win. Um, you know, I was on outside. He was on inside. He, he got a great run through one and two, and uh, he did a good job. He got up, almost cleared me, and kind of took it for granted that I would lift to let him in line, and I didn't. So, oh, you know, that's, that's his right. I'm going to sit here and complain about it. We're going to go to work with our discount dire dodge and try to beat him next week and the week after and every other week. Brad is watching the video right now, the replay of this. Brad, you're on probation. Do you think Kyle took advantage of that fact here tonight? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I got my uh, hands tied behind my back, but I'm not going to complain about it. We're just going to go to work and uh, try to win races and win them the right way. What's up, Bristol? Oh, y'all are so loving. Thank you. Kyle Busch, driver of the number 18, double mint Camry.
Rick, ready to win it again. Brad Keselowski, driver of the Penske Racing Dodge. Kyle Busch is... We sped to keep from going a lot down. You heard it there. They're going to hold him one lap. Now they actually changed right sides first. Now they're changing the left. Well, I mean, he was going to be a lap down either way. No, no, I guess that's a little hand signal he's giving the NASCAR officials. <laughs> Said unsportsmanlike conduct. That's freedom of speech. They're going to... We all work too hard for this. You're costing us. We rode parking for two laps. I, I don't know, but my guys work way too hard to be in this position and fight hard all day long. Uh, to be put with a wrecked race car at the end of the year. You know, we wanted to come out here and finish strong. We felt like we had a top four, top five car. And uh, it just means, it means so much to me, to those guys, that we come out of here with a good run like we were having. And it's very unfortunate, you know. It's just a guy that uh, doesn't have his head on straight apparently today. And thought everything was good. Talked to him in the, uh, you know, in the pre-race and the driver's meeting and all that. But he's such a two-faced guy, it just doesn't matter. I just, he raced me like a clown all day. Um, driving all over me, um, running all over my back bumper, and cut in front of me, and I didn't look. The 2011 Southern 500 was won by underdog Regan Smith in dramatic fashion, but it was all overshadowed by Kyle Busch dumping Kevin Harvick and their post-race fight. There should be a lot of contact as we head down this back straightaway. Kyle Busch way on the inside, picks up a spot. Harvick drops one. Edwards to second on fresh tires. Four to go this time. Four to go and three. Oh, five. a player in the wall. Hard. Hard wreck. He stays four, out. Four, four, four wrecks down here. Turn four. Big wreck. Harvick in trouble. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. We can do the damn thing. Three of the four Childress cars in trouble in the right, closing five. laps. Boy, four, get four tires right Boyer's car, the front end destroyed. Remember we saw Kyle Busch dropping way down to the bottom, passing cars almost on the apron. That's his number 18 against Harvick. Well, you can see already the left front of Harvick's tire where they made contact. The whole left side, and here comes Kevin back. Whoa. Gives the 18 a big shot in the rear. And here comes Boyer down on the bottom, and they get three wide right here, and this is when I knew it was going to go bad. It just would not work. They, you can see the 18 and the 29 hit again there, and Kyle Busch just goes dead left and pretty much hooks Kevin Harvick in the 29. Six Inside. Inside. 39's inside. 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 Very low. Hold it straight, hold it straight, hold it straight, hold it straight. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And Harvick and Bush. <laughs> He's after him. Yeah, this, this, this has just started now. Kyle says, I don't know how you got it. This ain't gonna happen too good. There was a pass, there was contact, and then as Boyer went into the fence, Kyle Busch came and turned Kevin Harvick around. And we know Harvick is, he, he, he plays rough, especially when races are with. I've seen him climb over people's cars to get to him. We've got cars overheated. We've got drivers overheated. And we got wrecked cars and Bobby Labonte crashed on the final lap. Harvick looking in his mirror. Shuts the switches off. Something's going to have to give here, boys. This we thought it could be Newman and Montoya. Turns out it's Harvick and Bush. And they are still stopped way up at the turn four end of Pitt Road as Regan Smith does his victory lap. And Harvick's going to put the steering wheel back on. I think Harvick was getting ready to hop out of that thing. I think somebody must have gotten to him. No, nope, wheels no, off again. Here, here he comes. comes. He says, okay. 
This is enough. I'm going back here and we're going to have a little talk. And there goes his car. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Kyle Bush just out of the transporter. And, uh, you know, Kyle, we you wanted to see the last lap and a half, and we have a monitor here. We'd like you to talk us through what happened between you and Kevin Harvick. Yeah, sure, no problem. I mean, it was tight racing after the restart there, and Harvick's up on the top a little bit loose, and I had a run, and I gave him room, and he kind of came off the wall. That's a bad angle, obviously, but, um, you know, and then he lifted early to let me go into turn three. I thought it was all good, and then he drives in the back of me there. So... Uh, made my car loose all the way through the exit and just made a run for those two guys to get back on my inside and and then uh, obviously Clint wrecked bouncing off of Harvick and it was just just uncalled for you know just unacceptable racing and um, you know it's in the last couple laps but I gave him room off of two I didn't get the room so um, just real unfortunate I mean I hated it we we tore up a few good cars there and our double mint Camry was so good today that uh, we should have ran up front should have finished up front but we kind of got marred back in traffic there and tried to fight our way back forward so um, it was a really good, clean night. It probably passed the most cars tonight, but uh, there was one I couldn't pass. Uh, Kyle, I uh, understand now you're being asked to go to the NASCAR trailer. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, no big deal. That's fine. Good to hash it out now. Might as well. Okay, good luck. <laughs> yeah, thanks. All right, tell your side of the story, Kevin. Uh, I mean, obviously we were just racing hard and, and doing what we had to do there at the end, and, and um, things happen. Things happen? That's it? That's it. What do you do? Good. Racing, I guess. What you guys talk about? What got discussed in the truck? Not much. Oh, come on, Kevin. What got talked about? Anything really to tell you other than not much. Is it settled between the two of you? You saw the end. <laughs> in the 2011 Windstar World Casino 350K, Kyle Busch was running a truck series race at Texas for fun, while multiple drivers, including Ron Hornaday, were in the midst of an intense championship points battle. What unfolded was the lowest moment in Kyle Busch's career to this day and would lead to his NASCAR suspension for the rest of the year. Take that spot away. How about that young driver, Ron Hornaday, who's trying to get by Kyle Busch here? Ooh, close. Three wide into turn four. That moves Kyle Busch all the way up the racetrack. He has to catch it. Avoiding the wall. wall. And Hornaday boot. catches the wall. Clear low. Caution's out. Caution's out. Caution is going to come out. Both drivers trying to get by, look like the 17 of Timothy Peters. They slid up the racetrack, and now Kyle hey, Busch not down, happy at all. It's all good, dude. And Kyle on, Busch Bobby. is going to turn on, over and grab the wall. A championship it. contender Hornaday in the wall. Well, Kyle Busch should be parked for this race and maybe the rest of the season for that. Holy cow, I can't believe he did that. Championship contender Ron Hornaday hard into the wall. Kyle Busch sends him in. You all right? You know, we saw him playing games like that at Martinsville, but we're running over 180 miles an hour here. Window net down on the, the 33 garage, of Hornaday. The, the two trucks Pack were trying up. to get by the 17 of Timothy Peters. Yeah, I think it was a 07. Oh, the 07, excuse Pack me. It up. Pencil, I know what I was getting at. That is unbelievable. Yep. And that takes that 33 truck out of this championship hunt, I believe. Hornaday coming in just 15 points back, definitely in this Go championship drive, hunt. Go back Gained to the 32 hauler. points on the Repair. lead of this championship in four races and have it all come to an end like that. Obviously, Kyle Busch is really mad at Ron Hornaday as they went side by side by that lap truck of, of the 07 of Johnny Chapman. Here it is right here. They go side by side. Kyle Hornaday has to go up. Kyle squeezes down on Ron, but Ron has to, he's got to be in control of this truck. They both do a little bit, a little bit of contact into the wall, but I believe those trucks could be repaired and maybe race for the win still. And the caution has come out now. Right now, the caution is already out. A little bit more damage on Ron Hornaday's truck. Very minimal damage to that 18 truck, but this is when he's going to show his displeasure to Ron Hornaday. He gets up against him, and he just won't never turn him loose, Mikey. He's running wide open in the back of that truck, and he finally turns him head on into that outside wall. I don't think NASCAR is going to, you know, I think this goes beyond a little bit of have at it, boys. Oh, it's definitely way past that. That truck's running 130, 40 miles an hour when it hits that look outside at, wall. Look at that thing jump up off the ground. Look at all the damage to that 33, tr 33 truck. That's the truck driven by Kyle Busch. NASCAR has said the 18 and Kyle Busch parked for the race and Kyle Busch and Eric Phillips. You will need to report to the hauler, the NASCAR hauler, at the conclusion of this race.
I'm speechless. At, at Martinsville, we saw tempers flaring. At a short track, you've got a little bumping and banging. We come to a big racetrack like Texas Motor Speedway, where we have seen speeds upwards of nothing we've seen all year long. The fastest racetrack we go to, and now we have Kyle Busch retaliating on the 33, upwards of 150 miles an hour. Saw Ron get loose right there. Made some contact. Back this is turn one and, and two four here. And they send him into the wall. Three and four. Kyle Busch will never be my favorite NASCAR driver due to the things he's done off the track and on the track. But one thing is certain, as we've seen the end of multiple careers in the last few seasons, such as Jeff Gordon, Dale Jr., Tony Stewart, and Carl Edwards, the sport needs Kyle Busch. He puts butts in the seats, and he keeps people talking, posting, and tweeting. Everyone always tunes in post-race for his interview to hear what he has to say because we all know he speaks from the heart and will never be boring. Dale Earnhardt Sr. famously said, it doesn't matter if they're cheering or booing, all that matters is that they're making noise. Kyle Busch has to wake up every single day to hundreds of tweets from fans talking about how much they hate him and I don't know how he does it. We as adults pride ourselves in creating an anti-bully atmosphere for ourselves and our children. Then us, those same adults, will log into Twitter and berate a man's entire life, his looks, and his wife. All because he wasn't happy about finishing second in his interview. We are hypocrites. The point of this story wasn't to showcase how much of a supposed bad person Kyle Busch is. It was to highlight how important he is to this sport, and how if he ever left us, we would all have an empty hole in our racing hearts. This man is a hell of a driver. He broke both of his legs and came back to win a championship in the same year. Whether you like it or not, him running in the lower tier series makes all of those young guys better race car drivers. This man has won over 200 races across the top three highest levels our sport has to offer. This man is a living legend. I've recognized what he is and what he means to this sport, and maybe you should too, before he's gone.